fire, ice, electricity or poison. The Hysterix allows us to change elemental damage on the fly to whatever we need. But is that it? Or is there more to the Hysterix? Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar and today we're going to be diving deeper into this Mastery Rank 7 secondary weapon, the Hysterix. I'm going to be covering something cheap and affordable, something anybody can build, but of course we also have the classic end game setup with a Riven. Though keep in mind that my builds and guides usually follow a more new player friendly approach. So if you're a veteran of the game and already know most of this stuff, then please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Hysterix. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and for that I'm just gonna take a couple of free shots, a full spray of 16 bullets in the wall or better said quills and you will see that the accuracy isn't really there. I mean it's not terrible and the recoil is definitely manageable but the weapon unfortunately has a rather mediocre accuracy. Now you are not firing bullets, you are firing these little quills which have projectile travel time so you will have to leave your targets just a little bit but no fall off at all so you won't need to aim above them just leave a little bit now in order to change your fire mode you will click alternative fire and you can cycle through fire quill electric quill ice quill and of course poison quill depending on your own circumstances let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with first of all mod capacity is 60 out of 60 and if your hysterix only has 30 out of 30 then jump into actions and plug in a potato the orokin catalyst can be farmed from alerts invasions especially after dev streams or if you're lucky from the daily sortie if you guys don't have access to the sortie yet simply progress further through the game and you will don't rush it trust me no need for that my weapon has been formatted a total of six times but this was done for the purpose of testing for the weapon builds i'm recommending you guys free maximum of four format should do it by default the hysterix comes with one v or madurai symbol on to the stats accuracy is 14.3 as you saw there is not very accurate now you can go shot by shot if you want to use it kind of like leg style but that isn't really worth it i would spray and pray for the most part crit chance is consistent across the board the crit chance the multiplier the status chance the trigger the reload speed basically everything except the damage is consistent throughout the four fire modes so we're talking about 24% crit chance, which is nice. Critical multiplier 2.2, which again, pretty good fire rate of 7.0 and a magazine size of 16 with a reload of 1.7. Now the magazine size for a spray and prey weapon isn't all that great, but again, we do have a very quick reload time. Riven Disposition is 3 out of 5 because when new weapons come out, like brand new weapons, not prime versions, uh, D gives them the middle the middle um, uh, disposition which is 3 out of 5 and a status chance of 10% which is where the history suffers unfortunately this is kind of what keeps it in check now you'll see that the base damage is not the same throughout the four fire modes the fire together with the electric actually have the highest value at 40 base damage where the poison together with the last one which is ice have 36.1 there's a small difference there but still a difference however the damage arrangement is pretty much the same the disposition puncture is the highest followed by a little bit of slash and even lower impact. So the values differ a little bit, but not something super substantial. Enough about that, let's start slapping on some mods with Hornet Strike, which is 220% worth of mandatory on mostly any secondary, maybe not on the Zakti, but more on that in a separate video. Next, we're gonna look at more damage options because if you add more base damage to the weapon, you're also amplifying the special quills you do. So Augur Pact, definitely not a bad idea with an additional 90% damage, stay away from Magnum Force, this one currently is highly underpowered, it takes away 33% accuracy and it will give you 66% extra damage, it's simply not worth the endo investment nor the drain. We got our damage, let's move into crit chance and crit damage because again this is where the weapon shines, we got a good critical chance and good crit multiplier. If you guys have prime versions then by all means go for prime versions but for the sake of demonstration we're gonna go with normal versions initially. Pistol Gambit with 120% crit chance which gives me 52.8 crit and we're gonna get our crit damage through target cracker 60% crit damage. Unfortunately the crit damage mod for pistols currently again is a tad underpowered. If you guys uh, could get your hands on prime target cracker it's a worthwhile investment. Crit multi jumped up to 
1.5x. Next, multi shot, the best thing on mostly anything. There are a few exceptions to that, but not a lot. Battle Diffusion is mandatory with 120% multi shot, and we're also gonna be using Lethal Torrent. 60% fire rate and 60% multi shot. If you don't have this one, it pops up on alerts fairly off, and I mean, I see it like two, three times a week, something like that. Now, the multi shot is a must have, and this is the primary reason we're using Lethal Torrent. The fire rate is nice to add a bit of burst lower that kill time absolutely but keep in mind you will be bumping into that reload speed of 1.7 which again isn't terrible but still that means downtime we're keeping it mostly for the multi shot next this is when you go into elemental damage but before we do that let's understand how the elementals work on the hystrix first of all it takes the base damage of the fire mode you select it gives you that amount in elemental damage with a guaranteed status proc so for example if i'm doing poison quill all of this damage will be added again as poison damage and i have guaranteed poison procs with each and every bullet amazing isn't it now you would think that for example if i'm using poison quill and i'm gonna be adding a little bit of electricity because why not convulsion let's say i add convulsion that means that poison plus electricity will make corrosive right no Unfortunately, none of the quills damage, none of the quill elemental damage combines. So that's a bit of a bummer. I really thought it would, but it doesn't. However, if you guys are adding more of a specific element, it will combine. So in the case of electricity, that electric damage will wash into the additional electric quill damage. I know it's a little bit confusing, but again, it doesn't, the combinations don't apply. However, the single elements do. So for example, if I'm gonna build now corrosive, I got electricity, let's go into a little bit of toxin with pathogen rounds. Okay, now I got on the weapon corrosive damage, right here, 645, again, same value across the board. Now what will happen here is, if I use the poison quill, then I'm gonna get the extra damage from pathogen rounds, and if I use the electric quill, I'm gonna be getting the damage of convulsion. Of course, this is all on top of my existing elemental combination of corrosive. I know it's a bit confusing, but this is simply how the weapon works. Now, Corrosive is a very good elemental combo when you're talking about Grenier units in general. Their heavier units, such as Heavy Governors, have Ferrite Armor, and Ferrite Armor takes 75% extra damage from Corrosive. But if you guys are going up against the Corpus, then building Magnetic is not a bad idea because that deals extra damage to their shields. Or maybe you can use Gas, which bypass their shields entirely on a status proc and deals damage to their health. For the Hystrix against Corpus, I would recommend building heavily into Toxin, simply because that will bypass their shields entirely without a status proc and deal damage to their health. It's a lot more solid, especially considering we're gonna get guaranteed uh, Toxin procs with uh, Poison Quill. So keep that one in mind. The last mod slot is what I like to call an option slot and here I'm gonna have to mention Prime Pistol Gambit once again. Now if you have this one fully maxed out, slap it on and go for more crit with Hydraulic Crossers. Now Hydraulic Crossers is not a super common mod though it is easy to farm from the mission Pavlov that is a Lua spy mission. Link in the card now for easy mode way to get this one. Now these two together with the base uh, crit chance of 24% will mean that you'll have 101 crit chance, so guaranteed crit with each and every shot on the target. So if you have it, then by all means go for it. Another option for the last slot would be to further increase your elemental damage, or like we said earlier, we can just add more base damage to the Hystrix. So when you're talking damage, Augur Pack, never a bad idea. You simply cannot go wrong with adding more damage to a weapon. Keep in mind that the base damage here will also apply to the special quill, so there is that. However, if you guys know, for example, you're gonna fight Grenier, for example, Ferrite Armor, then by all means increase your elemental combo. Now, I didn't mention 60-60 versus 90 mods like I usually do, so let's talk about that next. Throughout my testing with the Hystrix, I fully expected the 60-60 mods to perform better, but because of that low base status chance of only 10%, the difference is so minute between the 60s and the 90s. Slap on whatever you have handy. Again, we're talking about 2-3% difference even when hitting high level targets. So you don't necessarily have to have them. But again, the 60s did perform a little bit better. Where is my jolt? This one is a bit expensive, unfortunately. And if you don't have it, forget about it. Just use convulsion instead. And for our first test, we're gonna go like this. We got a plenty of corrosive and we're gonna be using the poison quill. And I'm gonna talk exactly why that is in a second. Corrupted heavy gunner, level 120. 
Here's a quick note, because the enemy AI is paused, they do not take extra damage from my ranged attacks, that bug has been fixed a long time ago. Now let's go straight for headshots. You will see I'm gonna be getting some corrosive procs and because I'm using the poison quill, I'm getting a lot of poison on the target. Now alternatively, I can change to fire quill. It's not better than poison quill in this case in particular because poison uh, damage uh, over time stacks multiple instances. That's why you see I can light up this guy like a Christmas tree. For example, like that. You see all those uh, poison uh, ticks on the target. If I go for fire, unfortunately, only one will be applied, as you can see. And every time I add another fire proc, it simply refreshes the duration. So there is that to take into account. Against these guys and ferrite armor in general, I would simply go poison damage, as it will apply that damage over time to them. Now, when you're uh, running damage over time effects, a lot of them like this, it can be a smart idea to build viral damage. So for the duration of the viral effect, uh, your target's health, maximum health, will be reduced to 50%. So the toxin procs will have additional value. And this is pretty much what the weapon can do against high level targets. Now, this is definitely not as impressive as an Axe Prime or something like that, but for an MR7 weapon, this is definitely worth it. And I would highly recommend this weapon for anybody at MR7. Good, that's gonna be the base build for the Hystrix. Now we're gonna move into a Riven setup. And my Riven setup is pretty much similar to the standard uh, version. I simply use the 90 mod because I love extra damage, why the hell not? And I use the uh, Riven instead of the 60, 60 mod. This one gives extra damage, which will help the quills, which will help basically everything. Critical chance and 95.7 puncture. Now the puncture is not a bad idea because again, the highest amount of damage on all the fire modes is puncture and that will deal 50% extra damage against armor targets, which are usually Grenier. But you can find Corpus which have shields and armor, especially if you guys go into Index. And we're gonna be respawning the exact same targets as before. Poison Quill, one more time. Currently, Rivens for the Hysterix. I noticed you guys like to talk about Rivens. Was that just me or is it like a bad impression or something? Now, if I was to go for a Hysterix Rivens, keep in mind that unrolled Hysterix Riven with like mediocre stats go between 50 and 70 plat currently on PC. So they're not very ex expensive. If you're having fun with the weapon, then by all means go for one and roll it a little bit. If you want to talk about like the ideal stats for a Hysterix Riven, then I'm gonna have to say critical chance with critical damage and damage and or multi-shot. Pretty much the standard affair when it comes to the Hysterix. As for a negative, see if you guys can get minus zoom. Usually I prefer my zoom on weapons, I do like landing my shots, but minus zoom would probably be the way to go. Especially for you guys on consoles, then absolutely go for that. And this is pretty much performance with a Riven. Now, if I unload a full clip in this guy's head, you will see that it does roughly 50 to 60% of his health, but then uh, the Toxin procs will take another 15-20% as well. It still doesn't kill it in a full clip. Next, we're gonna amp up absolutely everything with Warframe buffs, and for that, we're gonna pick up Lady Mirage Prime. And while the premium skin definitely makes Mag more... Pleasing to the eye, it has nothing on Lady Mirage. There we go, that's a lot more pretty. As for Warframe buffs, we're gonna be using Pistol Lamp for 27% extra damage, and we're also gonna be using Mirage's buffs. When it comes to Arcanes, you can go for Arcane Precision. First and foremost, on Headshot, 80% chance for plus 120% damage to pistols for 8 seconds. This is a huge buff. This one is farmable from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. Alternatively, from the trade chat, you can pay around 100, 120 plat for the R3. As for your second Arcane, you have a bit of an option here now you can go for something like what are you arcane velocity to get some fire rate but as you saw they were firing pretty quickly as it is and we're reloading a lot this will simply increase my downtime and i don't need the extra burst so my recommendation would be arcane awakening again we reload a lot so 40 percent chance for plus 100 percent damage to pistols for 16 seconds plus the usual one arcane revive farmable from the second night long down on cedars and this one is a bit less expensive very well, let's see what we can do now with the power of Warframe buffs. Activate my free ability for a massive 514% damage increase. And of course, Mirage's clones as well. And you will see now that in about a clip, I can take out two of these um, high-level targets. 
The Hystrix for an MR7 weapon packs quite the punch. It is fun to use, well at least for me because I like sticking stuff to walls and it fires projectiles. That means that if you headshot it sends them flying like that which is absolutely beautiful. Should you build a weapon? Well, at least now you have all the information you need to decide. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. Now, I can't promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week, but I will be reading through each and every comment. But until next time, guys, bye-bye.